Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio. Today I'm sharing with you an animal portrait. I didn't get my animal portrait done in the month of March, so I'm going to start out the beginning of April with this one, which would technically be March's animal portrait, and then I'll have another one at the end of the month that is for April. So I'm going to do collage today. This is my favorite go-to thing to do. Just uh, glue some paper to paper, make shapes, glue things down. <laughs> so um, this is therapeutic and relaxing to me to just pick some papers and and pick a shape and just kind of go for it. So I'm starting with the background. This is my 9 by 9 by 11 or 9 by 12 spiral bound Strathmore uh, watercolor journal. So it's got nice sturdy paper that holds up to this kind of uh, practice. So it's easy to make a page in this journal. I picked some kind of um, craft color, neutral color papers. Uh, there's some text paper, there's some printed paper, there's some tissue, uh, just bits that I had around. I didn't really go searching. I just kind of used stuff that was around my desk. And then at the bottom, I've got some greenish type of a color because that's going to be the ground eventually. And I'm gluing this down with Liquitex Matte Gel Medium um, with a brush, putting the medium underneath and then in some cases on the back of the paper. These are all different weights of paper. The craft colored stuff with the black printing is tissue paper and then the the other printed, there's another printed paper that's kind of like a scrapbook paper. It's heavier. And then some of the pe text weight is really thin. There's some um, newsprint and stuff like that. So I'm using the same glue. Sometimes I would alternate glues and use a liquid glue for the lighter stuff, but I didn't this time. So then I used some watered down gesso and just kind of toned down everything and unified it so that it was a little bit less in your face. And then I have this Naples yellow. I wanted to warm it up and so make it like more like sunshiny and warm. So I mixed the Naples yellow uh, acrylic with some glazing medium, which is basically a fluid paint without pigment in it. So it dilutes your paint, but it doesn't get it doesn't ruin it by um, diluting it. Sometimes if you dilute with uh, water, you will make your paint flaky or it just it loses its adhesion so using a glazing medium works really great also you can kind of work it into the cracks and crevices and then wipe it back and that's what I did I ended up deciding that I wiped it back too much and I went back over it again before I did that I did that I pulled off the tape because I thought I was done with the background and then I ended up putting more layers of paint on it so I shouldn't have peeled it yet but whatever, <laughs> these things happen. So I, I went ahead and put another layer of that Naples yellow mixed with more glazing medium to thin it out a little bit more. Dried that out and then in the center, I kind of added a little bit more white gesso thinned with water to um, kind of brighten up that center section. Then the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to have some kind of plant shapes, grass shapes at the bottom of the page. And I thought I would be able to do this by using a fluid paint. This is golden high flow. It's a very, very fluid, very pigmented paint. So you, even though it's, it's liquid, it doesn't dilute itself at, it by, at all by being so fluid. But I think I needed a smaller, um, uh, straw. This is like a, a, a straw for a smoothie and it's I think it was just too big to do this. It didn't come out the way I wanted <laughs> but I tried it a couple different times. I expected it to branch out and spread and I think I needed more focus. Uh, another way you could do this, this made me kind of lightheaded even trying it. Another way you could do it be to use canned air and that would probably work a lot easier than trying to blow with a straw, but I didn't have any canned air. I didn't have a smaller straw either, so I didn't worry too much about it. The next thing I wanted to do was make my focal image, which is going to be a rooster. Um, my mom and I have started this project where we are growing tomatoes. And 
we have a raised bed that rolls that we got and we put, you know, I live in Arizona and we don't grow things in the ground in Arizona unless they're cactuses because they just, it, the, the, the dirt's like clay, the heat is way too hot. And so we got this idea that we could have a rolling raised bed. So it's about, oh, I don't know, three feet tall and it has a big deep dirt thing with a water thing underneath so that it sucks up water from underneath. And then we put tomato plants in it. And then while we were there, there was this already, this tomato plant that had already been started and she wanted to buy that one too. So it's kind of in its own separate pot. And then we have some seedlings that we're growing tomato plants. I don't know what, what we're going to do with those. But anyway, it reminded me of farming and barnyards and um, my grandma's roosters that used to crow every morning when I used to stay there. And so I decided that that was a good way to go. I actually decided this in March. I just didn't get it done. There's also, I also could have done a cow or a pig. There's just so many cute barnyard animals. And um, I was at the Hobby Lobby and they had a whole bunch of them out for spring. So I just picked some painting papers, um, some of these are gel prints. Some of them have been worked on more than just gel prints. They've got patterns on them from different things. Some of them were from Happy Mail and some of them are ones that I made myself. And I'm just cutting pieces out of them to create my rooster image. This is a little bit tricky. An easier way to do it is to draw it and then fill it in. And a lot's Lots of times you guys have seen me make images by drawing on deli paper and then gluing the, the papers, the different color papers, to the deli paper and then taking that whole image and gluing it on my page or my canvas or whatever. That's, that's a very common method that I use. But I just went for it. I just went for shapes. And I'm kind of thinking about what shapes I need in what areas and... It probably would be more refined and, and better looking had I made a drawing or an underpainting or anything like that, but I didn't. I just didn't feel like it. I just, I wanted to skip all the fussy steps and just get to the collage gluing part. So I'm just using my scissors, cutting out shapes, placing them on the page in areas. And that is the way I completed the entire thing. Um, yeah. Sometimes you just do it that way. There's no right or way, right or wrong way to make a collage. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I am very sure that some of you will say in the comments, oh, I could never do that. I could never do that. But you know what? It's not true. You just need to think about shapes. You need to think about what your eye sees and then translate that into a shape. We, we tend to editorialize what our eyes see. Um, a really great example of that is clutter blindness. We don't see it. There's clutter everywhere, but we don't see it because we aren't looking. If you really engage your brain and look at something, it has a shape. Even if it's a face, it's an oval or it's a square. Um, if it's a tree, it's got all kinds of shapes. If it's, you know, if everything has shapes and if you can just focus on the shape of something, you can draw, you can collage in this way. This is kind of like drawing because I'm just making shapes that I think I need. Um, I look at a section and I think, oh, well, that needs to be filled in with a long shape with kind of a, an end on it, or that needs to be filled in with, you know, whatever. It's just a rooster. It's, it's not, it's not complicated. <laughs> You know, it's it's fairly easy. Of course, I was looking at a picture of a rooster. I'm not saying that this came from my brain. I was looking at a picture of a rooster. I changed the colors. Um, I made the colors that I wanted on it. Uh, it's not realistic, obviously. But this is an easy exercise. Very easy. Anybody can do it. So I, in as I'm doing this, I'm trying to find other pieces of paper that I need, I need another color. I end up adding in some of that, uh, a piece that, that's very much that green gold color that's at the bottom. Um, I've got some rusty colors. I've got, you know, rusty reds, orangey, 
orangey reds, pinky reds. I've got some brown. I've got some turquoisey blue, some kind of purple and turquoise together. Um, just, you know, scraps and stuff that were around. I don't have a great way to organize my larger papers yet. Uh, I do have all my smaller pieces in these plastic boxes that I sort by color, but I have a very large pile of papers that are not sorted, and I have a very large pile of papers that are too big to fit in the boxes. I haven't decided should I tear them up and put them in the boxes, or should I keep them whole? I've been putting them in kind of these uh, plastic folders, but I don't have any place to put the folders. I'm, you know, it's constantly, it's constantly a struggle to try to figure out how to organize your studio. It's just crazy, you know, and you, you get an idea and you think, oh, well, I want this thing that I need to buy, you know, from the container store because it's going to be perfect. And then, then you put it in and it doesn't work the way you think. And it's just, it's, it's constantly a <laughs> struggle. And I, I saw something funny on Facebook the other day. It said something like, I don't clean my, my craft room because I get distracted by all the great stuff I find. <laughs> and that is so true. This is so true. It's exactly what happens to me. So my, my studio is still a mess. And I don't know that it's ever going to get unmessy because I can't come up with the right solutions for to organize things. And, I, and besides, it's too much fun to play with the painting paper that I find. Rather than put it away, I would just rather make a collage like this. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you are there too. So I'm just continuing to cut and place pieces, trying to fit them into the places that need to be covered. And it's working pretty well. Um, the rooster that I was looking at, he was really fancy. He had uh, feathers kind of running down his neck and, you know, color, kind of colorful feathers running down his neck and colorful feathers on the ends of his wings and colorful feathers coming off his tail, and he had a very big tail. And he was very special. <laughs> very, very special. So I can just imagine him strutting around, looking at all those hens saying, hey, hen, get me a beer. Pretty sure that's what he would be doing if he was, you know, a human. And we all know those rooster-type people, don't we? We've seen them. <laughs> They're out there. So I'm pretty much finished with the body. I'm uh, attaching more feathers to make sure that his tail is very large and colorful and just, you know, like it should be. If you're a rooster, you should have a big, colorful tail. Kind of cutting the shapes in an arc shape with tips and I have to keep like placing them in different areas, trying to make them fit because I'm not doing a very good job of cutting them, but I want to make, I want to use them all up and I want to use all these little scraps that I've created by cutting the larger pieces. I want to use up the smaller pieces because I don't want to have to sort them into my color boxes. So I'm trying to not use the bigger pieces now. Now I'm more trying to get smaller ones, although I am having to use some larger ones. But in the end, it all works out. It ends up being all filled in with different colors and it's just fun. It's, it's cute and fun. Not sure what other animal portrait I'm going to make this month. I don't know. I might make another, another barnyard animal. Uh, there's some really cute pigs out there. I'm kind of, kind of liking the idea of a pig. I'm not sure. It is the year of the pig. I guess I've already made a pig, but it wasn't an animal portrait. It was just about the, the new year. And not so much like a funny caricature of an animal or something like that was what I was thinking. But I don't know. I really don't know. We'll find out at the end of the month when I do it. If I get to it. So I think that everyone should do something like this. It's really fun and relaxing. And I hope to see your, your animal portraits if you make some or your collages. I always like to see what other people make that are inspired by what I'm doing on my channel. This thing at the bottom here is a napkin. It's left over from another project 
that I did. In fact, I think it was a hop. And this is the leftover piece of napkin that's still on my desk. And I had some flowers on it. And I thought that that would be a way to fill in the bottom a little bit more since my, my grass made out of blown paint didn't work as well as I intended. <laughs> so I put some of that on. Now, usually I would use a napkin glue for that or a fluid glue for that. But I did it with the the uh, gel medium anyway, and I tore it a little bit, but it, it was already torn, so I wasn't too concerned about it. It just kind of fills in the bottom, and I'm still continuing to fill in feathers to make sure everything is, is copacetic with this guy's tail. You know, he wouldn't want to be missing a feather. He'd probably, he would probably get on his nerves. <laughs> So I'm just using an old scrubby brush that's full of glue already to do this so that it's, um, I'm not ruining anything or whatever. I didn't use my regular collage brush, the wide one, because these were such thin pieces that I was attaching, I decided to use a thinner brush. So once I dried this and got it all within a reasonable amount of dry, I'm adding some Stabilo All Pencil. This is the black one and I'm activating it using a water brush and kind of just adding a shadow. Shadows make me happy. Shadows and highlights. I think that on a collage, they really make a difference in making what you glued on appear as if it's part of the page. It unifies it, brings it, you know, all together by having that little extra shadow around it. And there's lots of products you can use to do this. I just happen to be doing it with a Stabilo All pencil today. It's a highly water reactive pencil and a fun tool. I'm adding in some, some detail shadows around some of the stuff and then a general shadow around the entire shape. And then just blending that out and making it feathery by using the water brush there's water inside the barrel of the brush. And when I squeeze that little red section, it allows the water to come out. That's like a little valve in the center there. And it's easier to me than getting a paintbrush and dipping it in water, which is absolutely an option for blending this. You could do that. You could even blend it with medium if you wanted to, like a fluid medium and make it very permanent if you did that. But it's plenty permanent as it is, so I'm not too worried about it. This is an art journal page, and my art journal, it's not going to be um, subjected to light. It's not going to be in a frame or anything like that, so it all works out great. I'm also doing it around the flowers at the bottom and making them stand, stand out a little bit more. I think this guy's a free-range chicken. Um, he's out there you know, with his hens, making sure that the eggs get laid for, uh, you know, free range chicken eggs. Yeah. I just got some from a guy who had him on, had made them on, well, he didn't make them, the chickens did, but on an, on a farm, on a piece of land. They taste good. And the, the yolks are very yellow, where sometimes the store-bought ones are kind of pale. So then I go ahead and add highlights with my acrylic paint pen. This is Posca pen and it's got acrylic paint in it. And I kind of scratch it on there and then I blend that with my water brush as well, just to add some highlights. The final thing that I do is to draw or write the word cockadoodle do across the top of the page and then fill that in with a black Posca pen. Um, just it felt like it needed something something and I figured that that was that was appropriate because that is really what roosters sound like when you hear them so I hope you've enjoyed this animal portrait video if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment or question below subscribe if you haven't already turn on your notification bell share it on Pinterest whatever you want to do um, there will be links to to my other portraits that animal portraits that I've done this year in the end screen and perhaps in some of the iCards. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.